Hi, welcome to another edition of Hashtag Now Smoking. I'm your host, Gary Korb, Executive Editor for Cigar Advisor Magazine, and I'm joined today by Jared Gulick, also a Cigar Advisor, and um, we are going to be smoking the Romeo and Julieta 1875 Connecticut Nicaragua. Ooh. Does that sound confusing? A little bit. Connecticut Nicaragua. <laughs> well, <laughs> let me tell you what this is. This is actually a very unique cigar. Um, this was done in collaboration with the Placencia family, Nestor uh, Placencia and his family. Right. Uh, and I know Nestor Andres Placencia uh, s several years ago told me he was going to be growing Connecticut seed shade in Nicaragua. Right. So he said, that's my new project. So I said, okay, let me know how it comes out. Well, this is it. This is the result of that project. And they also uh, have been growing Connecticut seed in, under shade in Honduras. So that's kind of right. neat too. So anyway, uh, Rafael Nodal also worked with it. We'll get more into all the details, but it has this uh, really lovely looking uh, Connecticut wrapper. You swear it was from either Ecuador or uh, Connecticut, USA, right? It's really yeah, blonde, I mean, you know? From first appearances, I'm not seeing much of a difference, but. I know, it's, it's very impressive. And it's um, uh, also a um, core blend of all Nicaraguan tobacco. Right also from Placencia. So uh, this is actually a Puro, yeah. because this was grown to be. And it's, um, this is the Bully size. It's a Robusto, it's a five by 50. It's one of their traditional sizes, the Bully, in the 1875 line. And um, you've been inspecting it. How, how, uh, how does it look to you? It's, this is pretty nice for me. It's, it's, it's very smooth, like nice yeah. silky wrapper. Um, some prominent veins on it, mm -hmm. uh, but nothing to stand out or, right. or disappointing in, in the uh, presentation here. No soft spots. No, um, it's really nice. Uh, very well packed, uh, mm -hmm. you know, so it seems like it's very well rolled. I smoked one of these a while ago. And I, I did don't, too. I don't really remember much. Okay. Because we smoke so many different cigars, but. Mm -hmm. Kind of got um, a floral thing. It's really pretty. It's a slightly sweet. Yeah. Yeah. I'm getting that. Yeah, so um, I smoked it a few weeks ago too, and I just to warm up, you know. Right. And, I, and well, I'm not going to give any spoilers, but um, let's give it a cut. Let's see how it is today. Now the cap is a uh, triple seam, I believe, and it's really nicely done. Oh, look at that! Came off perfect. Yeah, I love when that happens. Perfect. Yep, me too. Wow, look at that! <laughs> Check out that pre-light. Mm. It's like um, it's like kind of salty. It's like trail mix, it's <laughs> the, like the fruity, salty. Really? Okay. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. All right. Well, let's light her up. Indeed. All right now, you know this Connecticut wrapper looks um, doesn't look overly delicate, but I, I always like to be a little more careful when I toast. <laughs> Connecticut's always make me nervous because they can make you look like a novice yeah. real quick. You know? <laughs> There's so. no hiding if you've burnt it. I know. <laughs> wow, nice volume of smoke. Yeah, very toasty. Yeah, toasty. Real toasty. Kind of cedary. And look at that nice how that smoke just goes right through there just naturally. Yeah. <laughs> I love that. Anyway, well, I'll tell you, I guess we're off to a good start. Let's see how we do when we get into Act One. All right, we are now in Act One of the Romeo y Julieta 1875 Connecticut Nicaragua. Now say it again five times. Bully. <laughs> <laughs> it's the bully. Five by 50, I'm here with Jared Gulick. And uh, I have a couple of notes as usual on the cigar. Uh, again, it is a five by 50 ring. It is a tr traditional Robusto, right? Uh, it's about medium strength, would you say? At yeah, this point? absolutely. Okay. Uh, and all of the ra and the wrapper is Nicaraguan Connecticut seed grown. You know, it's Connecticut seed grown in Nicaragua, but it it has been aged for three years. Right. So it's that's why it's very smooth. And um, the uh, vintage binder and filler tobaccos. These are all select tobaccos. Right. Uh, grown on uh, Placencia's farms, and you know the Placencias have been hot lately. Oh yeah. They've been making some amazing cigars. You know the Alma Fuerte and the Alma del Fuego, and they're getting great reviews. And um, the uh, press release here says it's a blend of Nicaraguan tobaccos, but this special collaboration with Placencia cigars includes tobaccos from the family's private reserves. By the way, you know the wrapper 
is grown under shade, just like, like the, they do in Connecticut. The, the cheesecloth. Yeah, the yeah. cheesecloth. It's not cloud cover. So he's doing it the traditional way, but in Nicaragua. And um, anyway, they did this, as I said earlier, with Rafael Nodal. He's the head of product capability for Altadis. And um, he created um, this cigar with uh, Mr. Andres Placencia. That's Mr. Yeah. Junior. And um, they worked two years on this. Yeah. They worked for, on this for two years. So uh, cigars just don't happen overnight. Raphael's coming up a lot <laughs> yeah. for, so, right now, isn't he? He's, he, he, he's got cigars here and everything. Well, you know? this is the second cigar they've done with um, yeah. Placencia. They did, also did the Romeo Nicaragua <laughs> with him. Um, he says that this cigar is intriguing. It's not a Connecticut cigar, nor is it a Nicaragua cigar. It's the first Connecticut Nicaragua cigar. <laughs> and that makes for a big difference, uh, which we've been talking about. So what are you getting uh, out of your cigar uh, right now? What are you tasting? Um, it's very creamy, smooth. Mm -hmm. um, still, I agree. Still very toasty, but very salty, too. Like yeah, it does really have that kind salty. of saltiness. I find sometimes that in and, a Cuban cigar. And as I said it, I kind of realized that that might kind of be off-putting. To some like where you're saying like oh they put too much salt on it it's it's not like that it's uh -huh. just kind of got this like it makes your mouth water when you smoke it that kind of salt you know yeah and uh it's i don't know man like i, I think it's important to smoke this on a clean palate and i say okay. that because the first time i smoked it it was a little bit i don't want to disrespect the cigar and say it wasn't memorable right but i've smoked a lot of cigars since then and i couldn't really recall anything but this I'm going to remember because it's on a clean palate. I'm picking mm -hmm. up a lot more. So, you know, well, I guess morning cigars tend to be smoked on clean palates anyway. But <laughs> go out of your way if you don't have a clean palate to mm -hmm. wait and smoke this clean. Are you getting a little, like, on the finish, like a little bit of pepper? Just a hint. You just retrohaled, did you? I did. How does that? Retrohale is... Uh, I'm combating a cold, so it's kind of, it's, it's not <laughs> as, make it's, it worse. <laughs> it's not as, it's not as potent as it would normally be. It's, yeah. if anything, it helps. <laughs> but, oh, okay. um, but, uh, it's, I don't, I'm not getting as much of the retro hail, so I won't comment on it. Uh, cause I don't, right. mine's going to be a little skewed right now. All right. I'm, the, the ash is really nice. It's firm. It's a uh, gray. What's that? What do you call that? Like a nickel stack kind of a deal. Right. Yeah. And I'm going to ash it just to be safe. And um, I'm getting mostly like a, um, a toasty, woody combination mostly. Yeah. And I'm, st I'm getting a little bit of this pepper. On the, and you know, it's not, it's not sweet. This isn't, you know, I thought this might be a little sweeter. But um, I'm wondering if um, maybe Connecticut grown in Nicaragua isn't as sweet as Connecticut grown in the U.S. Yeah. Uh, but, but I guess Connecticut shade has always had kind of a touch of bitterness to it, too. In a lot of cigars, you know, just—I don't mean in a bad way. It's just that's just one of the uh, one aspects of, the, of it. Yeah, it's, it's yeah. what it is. You know, mm -hmm. that's where I think a lot of those coffee notes come from, especially if it goes through like a Maduro process. Like if you have Connecticut, mm. uh, Connecticut broadleaf straight right. into a Maduro, it tends mm -hmm. to be a little bit more on the bitter side. But mm -hmm. this is—I would agree—it's not a, a, you know overly sweet. I, I get some sweet notes here and there, mm -hmm. but nothing that would be. I wouldn't put this down as a base flavor of sweet at all. Right. I okay. Agree. Right. Now, we were talking about these brands. We have a classic brand here, iconic, Romeo and Julieta, and Placencia, and right. uh, they're all working together. And, and like, when you, when you smoke cigars, like, are you more of a guy who, like, is, are you a brand guy or a blend guy? Ooh. <laughs> That's a good question. Brand or blend? Mm -hmm. If I'm honest, mm -hmm. it's a little bit of both. But I think what's important to know is that you can't be a brand guy unless you're a blend guy first because you have to smoke enough of their cigars mm -hmm. based off of what you know you like by looking for blends to find a brand that you love. Right. So uh, Pulo always makes fun of me. He's like, you're, you're just always smoking like new cigars. You just, you, you want to just try something new all the time. <laughs> well, you do. And, you and I do. So I, I like, I like <clears throat> the discovery and the experimentation. I love that aspect of it. Uh, that's a lot of fun. The journey is mm -hmm. better than the, the destination in this case, you know. Okay. But um, there are brands, and I'm not going to go into all of them, but mm -hmm. there are a few brands that I've identified and I cling to them. Mm -hmm. So it's a little yeah, bit I of both. Yeah, I think we all do. Yeah, it's a little yeah. bit of both. All right. Well, anyway, Act 1 was uh, pretty nice. And you know what? In Act 2, we're going to try pairing this cigar with some Gentleman Jack. I'm always Ooh. talking about Gentleman Jack, but we're going to actually do it. So we'll see you in Act 2. Stay tuned.
All right, we are in Act Two, and we are really loving the cigar. I'm with Jared Gulick, copywriter for CigarAdvisor.com, and we are smoking the 1875 Romeo and Julieta, Connecticut Nicaragua Bully. And um, I like the Bully in the uh, original blend too, but this is really fascinating. And um, I thought what we would do is, I'm always talking about Gentleman's Jack and how it pairs with a lot of cigars. Yeah. So I brought some with me today and um, been a little poor. I've been smoking this with coffee and it's always good with coffee. I love cigars with coffee. Now you have a green tea over there, Green right? tea. Yeah. And how, how does that taste? How does cigar taste with that? Green tea's got a very light taste to it. It's very mm -hmm. subtle. So um, it doesn't overpower the cigar, mm -hmm. uh, which is why I like that. It was kind of on a whim today. I just wanted something that didn't have a ton of sugar in it. You know? Right. But something that I could just, you know, cleanse my palate with. Actually, green tea is a nice palate cleanser, too. Is it? Okay, yeah, yeah it probably is. Um, all right, so let's see how it is with the Gentleman's Jack. Cheers. Okay. I blew the smoke right in the glass. <laughs> now, well, interesting. Sweet. I did it in reverse. <laughs> I took the drink first and then and then took oh, a puff okay. and you took a puff and then took a drink. Well, this has a long finish and it's kind of sweet and it, it kind of makes up for some of the lack of sweetness yes. in the cigar. I would I would agree. Um, another thing I noticed right away is that the salt in the cigar, which has been very prevalent, I've yeah. talked about it a couple it times. It's a little salty, you're it's right. It's very, it just almost evaporates because the mm -hmm. sweetness of this takes over. I would almost say this is to my palate, a little bit too overpowering for this kind of cigar. But okay. I get to drink at work, so I'm not gonna <laughs> But anyway, this is, this is a Tennessee whiskey. It's double mellowed. Yeah. And uh, it's made by Jack Daniels. And um, uh, this is not a commercial. No. <laughs> they didn't pay us or anything. No. Um, but um, it's very velvety. I kind of like it. I like it um, for, its, for its sweetness, just like mm. I like you know, sweetness in my cigars. But I'm noticing also just this cigar is kind of sweetened up naturally at this point. Yeah, you were saying that a little bit off camera. For me, it's more of like a floral yeah, type of like flowery. I'm getting that too. It's, it's uh, really wonderful. I mean, a, uh, I mean, well, you work on something for two years. Yeah. <laughs> you, ever get, you ever get those things where you like, you know, because uh, taste and smell are symbiotic, right? Absolutely. But you ever get that thing where you're just like, you taste something like, this tastes like that thing over there smells. Like... And it's just like uncanny, and it's, this tastes like flower smell to me at this point. Now I'm going to try it your way now. Yeah. I'll try it your way then. It is smooth though, isn't it? Mm -hmm. It goes down easy. <laughs> Velvety, man. Yeah, I mean, I'm getting like, wow, it's like, it's sort of like um, almost an effervescence. You know, when yeah, the smoke a, hits the uh, there's scotch. A, there's a tingle. Or the bourbon, whatever it is. <laughs> there's certainly a Whiskey. tingle. Um, all right. Well, anyway, imagine you're a master blender. Oof. Okay? You're going to make your own cigar. What, what, how would you, what would you blend if you had to make your own custom cigar? That's a... That's, I thought the first question was hard. This is really <laughs> tough. Um, okay. So everybody knows, or people who are watching us regularly know, I love Corojo. Yeah, um, I do too. I'm particularly a, a big fan of Christian's Corojo. Absolutely, Honduran uh, Corojo. I mean, let's be honest, it's the only authentic Corojo that you can get mm -hmm. anyway. Yeah. Um, so I would probably take his uh, Honduran gro uh, grown Corojo. I would want something rich and with some body to it for the binder, so I'd probably go with something like Brazilian Matafina. Ooh. Which I think would add. That's nice. It's but it's also smooth. It's got like a cream in this. Yeah. Maybe and even it's make it a, sweet. Maybe even make it a Maduro binder. Maduro binder, uh -huh. right? Okay. And then I would want for a little bit of uh, character and also a little bit of complexity a mix of Dominican and Nicaraguan fillers. Okay. So we'll have a you know. Mm -hmm. Everybody gets a everybody gets a tobacco. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We'll do a world yeah, tour. Yeah, I, I would probably. Um, well, I, I love the Honduran Corojo, too. So it would either be that or Mexican San Andreas Maduro, because that's really my, I, I could my top favorite. That. And maybe um, a Cameroon binder. Ooh. And, like, Nicaraguan Jalapa, just to kind of sweeten it up a little more. And maybe even a little Matafina in there, too. 
Yeah, um, that'd be a really sweet cigar. And um, just just a little uh, Palato Cubano for a little Ooh. more sweetness. <laughs> I don't know what I'm talking about, all right? <laughs> There's a blender out there watching this going, what the hell? <laughs> he doesn't know shit. Yeah, and he's saying, we tried that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it didn't work. It didn't work. <laughs> anyway, all right, so this is really going great, and let's see what happens when we get down to Act 3. All right, the bands are off. We're in Act 3 of the Romeo and Julieta 1875 Connecticut Nicaragua Bully. Say it five times fast. I love it. <laughs> All right. Anyway, so once again, this is a wonderful cigar. I'm really enjoying it. Uh, it's very smooth. It's very creamy. It's, it's a little sweet, um, very woody for me. Little, yeah. And I, I agree with you on the floral aspect of it, too. Yeah. Uh, this was a two-year project between Rafael Nodal, and um, who's AG Room, Boutique Cigars, and uh, Nestor Andres Placencia, yes. who grew this uh, Connecticut shade in Nicaragua, and um, it, I, he did a fantastic job. So what did you think of the Gentleman's Jack? Gentleman's Jack, great drink. Mm -hmm. Don't think it was the best pairing for me. Now, okay. I'm not saying any of you out there, this might mm -hmm. be a, a, a slam dunk, home run, whatever you want to call it. But for me, I'm obviously more of a beer guy, so I usually okay. try to speak to beer. Mm -hmm. And I know a lot of people like the uh, the craft beer world, and this is on the cheaper side too, so you're not going to spend a lot of money. But there's a, a pretty popular beer out there called Shock Top. It's oh, got, sure, yeah. It's got this citrusy okay. element to it, yeah. which I think would play real nice with the floral notes okay. that we're getting on the cigar. All right. It's not too heavy. It's yeah. just kind of like an easy going beer. You can just drink mm -hmm. it and just enjoy it, you know? Okay. Well, I thought the Gentleman's Jack went really great with this. I, I agree with you. It is a little bit heavy. Yeah. But I think, you know, it, you really need to kind of sip it and just kind of, you know, I, I thought it did uh, add some nice accents to the cigar. So what are you uh, what are you getting at this point? You're a little bit behind, but... Um, a little bit behind. You're, you're on the border there. Yeah, it's a little bit more emphasis on those floral notes. Um, the salt kind of like, it's like intermittent now. It just kind of yeah. pops up every once in a while. Mm -hmm. It's kind of Lots, buried in the mix a little bit. You know... It reminded me, there's, you know, you wrote an article last year, the, the Connecticut Resurgence, and it mm -hmm. reminds me of, of a cigar that should be on that list because this is not your typical Connecticut. This is not, no. this is not a traditionalist Connecticut by any sense of the word. Mm -hmm. um, it's got a lot more complexity than oh, I expected, yeah. than I, I had my first time, which is why I recommended the clean palate mm -hmm. thing. But, um, yeah, I mean, it's just, uh, it kind of has, like, I think John said it once, drive-by flavors. They're kind they're of like, <laughs> they pop in every once drive in a while. They're drive-by media. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but still toasty, still woody. Mm -hmm. uh, though th That has been a constant throughout the cigar. Yes. And a pleasant constant. Yeah, and that. I think they're kind of known for that. Even the, uh, yeah. the, the base uh, blend, you know, the uh, one that's made in uh, Dominican um, is kind of woody. It's very cedary. You know? But this is definitely much more complex. And yeah. again, it's a puro. You yeah. Know? And this, this cigar, uh, as a single, goes for uh, about $7.46 uh, on famous-smoke.com. It's a steal. So, I mean, <laughs> this is easily a $10 cigar. Yeah. You know, but it's a lot less than that uh, if you buy it at Famous Smoke. And, you know, they did a, a nice job on the box. I always like to point out the uh, artwork and stuff. They have the traditional Romeo and Julieta neoclassical artwork. Right. And I think they're a box of 25. You don't get a box of 25 that often anymore. So that's nice to know. And um, I'm just really digging no, it's the It's like cigar. the ketchup bottles. All the companies have decided <laughs> that they can make more money selling 16 ounces over 24 ounces for the same amount. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, it's, it's a rare thing to get a box of 25, and, and, and the, uh, the price is very reasonable. So, uh, anyway, check that out on famous-month.com. So, um, let me ask you another question. You know, we're, we're reviewing the cigar, obviously. Um, we don't do rating numbers right. on, on Cigar Advisor. You know, I mean, do you think, you know, maybe we should give rating scores or stars like our customers do? Or do you think we should just leave things as, as they are? It's an interesting question because, mm -hmm. you know, we just released our top 25 cigars of the year uh, recently. We had right. a lot of people commenting on the article saying, I wish you guys would put them in order. I wish you would give them a rating. <laughs> we do it alphabetically. <laughs> you know, and I think we should stay where we're at and not do it. And that's Why? Because Why, Jared? Because... Two reasons. One, I think it's an it's kind of like a, a really uppity thing to do. Like you know, <laughs> oh, my opinion is more important than anybody else's. You know, um, we're three guys. Now, mm -hmm. don't get us wrong. We, uh, we we know what we're talking about, but right. we're still three palates. We're it's a subjective mm -hmm. uh, you know industry by nature. Flavor is different for everybody. 
So I feel like I would sell these cigars by giving them a low rating number because mm -hmm. someone else might love it. Okay. Um, but I do think there are ratings that matter. Okay, in customer, what way? Customer ratings. Absolutely. Because they have no dog in the fight. Mm -hmm. They are smoking the cigars, they're spending the money on them, and they decide, hey, is this worth the bang for my buck or is it not? Right. So I think if anyone's looking for reviews, you know, you can look at the, the big magazines and, mm -hmm. you know, get a baseline. Yeah, that's what you, I do. You get a baseline, yeah. but I think when you see customer reviews and like, you know, 34 people are giving this a four and a half star review, that's a way better indicator than one person giving it a 95 or a 96. Right. So that's my okay. two cents. All right. I, I, I kind of tend to agree with you, but you know, I, I have to admit, I'm still a little bit influenced by high scores. Are you? Yeah, I am. I say, oh, I got a 92. I'm going to mm. try that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I don't know. It's just marketing you know. works, man. I guess it does. I don't know. <laughs> so. so anyway, I'm 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 really enjoying the cigar a lot, and um, it's, it's it's still very creamy, not a lot of nice dense smoke. Uh, it's very smooth. Um, it's great in the morning, and I guess you could smoke at any time of day for that matter. You know. Yeah, I, I think it, I think it's best for the morning, but uh, I agree that as uh, as long as you are, you know, have enough time between your cigars, mm -hmm. any time of day this is going to be really good. Yeah, and and this is another cigar I really think you should take your time with. Absolutely. You know, let it let it smoke itself, let it let it caramelize nat naturally, and the flavors and and uh, it's 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 really really delicious. Really great job by uh, Rafael Nodal and the people at Altidus, and of course. The people at Placencia yes. who are just growing some amazing tobacco, and you know Nestor Placencia, um, he loves experimenting with stuff. You know, right. He loves making these new things and out of tobaccos and hybridizing, and yeah. and I think he did a great job with the Connecticut. And um, you know, I can't say much more than that, other than um, well, yeah, he tinkered on this wrapper for two years. Yeah. <laughs> you know, well, so. on the well, on well, they worked on the blend for two years. Yeah. You know, and Raphael's got a great palate too. Yes, yeah. So between the two of them, I mean, we really can't miss with this one. Um, let me just uh, mention what other sizes are available. Uh, we're smoking the Bully, and you can also get a Toro, 6x52, uh, the Churchill, 7x50. These are all pretty standard sizes. Um, they have a Magnum, a 6x60. Ooh. Big ring fans will love that. Yeah, and um, the price of the cigar ranges um, from, like I said, um, we, we have this one's about seven, seven and a half bucks, up to about 850. Something like that. So even a Magnum is under ten dollars, you know. So that's a really good thing. That's more than a fair price for this. Yeah, more than a fair price. So anyway, we're just going to keep smoking this baby because um, I think I'm going to nub this one, you know. So, Got some tweezers. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, so remember you can buy all your Romeo and Julieta cigars at famous-smoke.com, especially this one that we're doing today, the Connecticut Nicaragua. And uh, for more cigar advice and information, please follow us at cigaradvisor.com. Sign up for our emails. And you can also follow us on Facebook and Instagram and Twitter. We have a Twitter account. That's right. And if you're watching us on YouTube, please make sure you sign up on YouTube to follow us and sign up for our notifications by yeah. clicking the bell, right? Click that bell, bell right, right here. here. Right here. Oh, I see it. Yeah, okay. yeah it's right there. And, uh, Anyway, I want to thank you also for watching, and we'll see you next week on Hashtag Now Smoking. Thank you, and happy smokes.